Okay, hello. Can you hear me well? I can, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, I know you're very short on time, so that's why we will not start with the laudatio from me, uh, from me to um, the prize, uh, the Weizmann Award for Peace and Social Responsibility, but you will have the time now, um, and we will do, um, yeah, I will do the speech afterwards, so if that's fine for you. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for accommodating me. It's just that I have to get to the airport to get a plane. So yeah, sure. I don't have. <laughs> so the stage is yours, and thanks for being here, uh, live and uh, in, um, yeah, live here. Thanks. Thank you, and I'd like to thank you for uh, awarding and recognizing Julian for his um, for his role as a pioneer and for really bringing. Uh, a revolutionary approach to um, bringing accountability. And I, it might be a um, good idea to, to think back about when WikiLeaks appeared um, on the stage, um, which was in the first, you know, in the early 2000s. Uh, and it grew out of a, a period in which um, there was uh, an, an intention by civil society to uh, make government transparent and accountable. And these are terms that we no longer use very much, transparency and government accountability. They've kind of fallen um, out, of, um, out of vogue with the times. And... Uh, WikiLeaks, as you know, was one of of several uh, projects at the time to uh, to bring greater accountability as as um, government and and um, the world basically moved onto the internet. And WikiLeaks did it in the most uh, successful way, perhaps. I mean, there was also the, the um, Freedom of Information Act legislation was enacted during this time. Um, but Julian combined his knowledge of how the internet actually worked with um, the uh, purpose of true investigative journalism. And he understood that uh, the, the uh, traditional newsrooms were completely clueless about how um, how uh, communications on on the net um, were able to unmask uh, sources in a way that traditional journalism didn't have to deal with. They had the traditional ways of of uh, protecting sources, but they had no idea about how to protect sources um, on the in the in the age of you know emails that were not encrypted and so on. And so Julian brought his, um, his knowledge of, of cryptography and understanding of um, communications on the internet and the architecture of the internet and so on into journalism and made an enormous contrib contribution, not just to how journalism was done, but also to um, uh, bringing the full full potential of um, information in its uh, as as a tool for accountability, and um, with the wars of in Iraq and Afghanistan, the way they had been reported by then was through embedded journalists uh, who really just gave a, a, a completely um, uh, uh, um, impoverished and biased understanding of what was going on. And so when WikiLeaks published the Afghan war logs and the Iraq uh, war diaries, they really were able to give an anatomy, uh, a kind of... Uh, um, yeah, 
really map out the war in all its destruction, not just when there had been, you know, a suicide bomb somewhere in Baghdad, um, but even individual killings that added up to 15,000 civilian um, deaths that had been unaccounted for until that, until that point, and the incredible carnage um, that, that those wars meant on the ground. And this really changed, enabled also the way um, that, that um, the newsrooms were reporting about the war, gave them really something to dig their teeth into and to uh, change the way those wars were talked about. And Julian has also had the incredible gift of being able to understand um, things at scale. So one of Julian's most famous quotes now that has been doing the rounds uh, on Twitter and so on is a comment that he made about the Afghan war, that the, that the goal was not a successful war. The goal is to have an endless war through which um, the tax bases of the UK and the US and, and European countries um, who are participating in these wars to go into the pockets of the arms manufacturers and the war pro profiteers. And this really has, has resonated these days, this day, uh, today, with how people have, have started to understand the drivers of war. And uh, similarly, by exposing th those wars, WikiLeaks is has been a driver for peace, a driver by exposing the war crimes, exposing the um, the true face of war, which is hell, which is uh, which is suffered by those who are killed and who are maimed, and in many cases, their cases, their their killing um, and their um, and the harm that comes to them is never reported on or is never known. And so it has no consequence. And for those victims of war, the only thing that approximates some form of justice is the right to truth. And the right to truth is in this day and age, perhaps, um, I think everyone's extremely sensitive to the importance of the right to truth, both for the victims and also for you know, the public in general, because countries need buy-in by the public. The public has to be, as Julian says, lied into war because they usually don't like war. Um, and so that's why WikiLeaks has been so important and needs, um, and needs to remain. Uh, it's important needs, needs to be recognized ongoingly because what is being done to Julian is just, uh, it can't be allowed to continue because he is being in this, uh, in this fight between accountability and impunity. Through Julian's prosecution, impunity is ahead and Julian's um, freedom is a vic it will be a victory for accountability, for the right to truth, for the public's right to know, and ultimately for democracy. Um, so in this context, um, it's incredibly, um, I'm incre incredibly um, thankful for this recognition uh, because Julian has been uh, attacked in so many ways and the recognition that of, of what has been his life's work which is to fight for victims and give the world the tools to have accountability now what the world does with it the public does with it the newsrooms do with it uh, is a different issue but he is able to put on the public record uh, the reality of um, not just of war, but of the subversion of uh, judicial processes in Germany, for example, 
in, in relation to the El Malzri case in Italy, similarly, when Italy attempted to um, extradite CIA agents who had been who had conducted a, a rendition from Italy and in Spain, where they were investigating, uh, attempting to um, bring to trial the U.S. agents who were responsible, the U.S. military um, personnel who were responsible for killing, deliberately killing uh, Jose Coso, a, a Spanish cameraman who was killed in Hotel Baghdad um, by U.S. troops, and they were aiming right at him. And, uh, and the U.S. used its political leverage in order to interfere with that, that process. So this is European uh, attempts to bring accountability within the European space, within the EU, um, to, you know, where the, where the facts were known and there was political interference. And this was laid, in, laid to light by WikiLeaks publications. And just one last point. Julian's freedom matters to Europe, not just on principle, not just for us who, who, um, you know, who, who support truth and, and democracy and want peace in the world, um, but also because this is an attack on European, the Europeans' right to know, on European press freedom. And Julian will fight this till the end. He will fight this until the it gets to the European Court of Human Rights, and this case will create um, the jurisprudence will will shape the scope of press freedom, of the right to know, um, of the right to truth within the European space. So, um, I'd like to thank you all. I'm sorry this is a bit rushed, uh, but I am very appreciative, and Julian is thrilled as well because um, he remembers. Um, you from from years ago and he hopes to be able to come and address you himself uh before too long Thank you very much, Stella, um, for taking the time. I think uh, none of us can imagine uh, under which pressure and stress you are, so that's why we just uh, relieve you. Uh, thanks for taking the time again. And um, yeah, we'll um, get the recording of this, <laughs> of my speech later to you if you're interested. And now, um, <laughs> all right, then, um, okay. Okay, then goodbye to you. And bye. <laughs> bye bye, thank you. Bye. <laughs>
And that's why we have the Weizenbaum Award for Peace and Social, uh, Societal Responsibility. He was an outspoken anti-militarist. He published texts that people are working in tech should refuse to build military tech. And every single person should refuse individually. He publicly he refused himself to work on electronic weaponry parts during the Vietnam War. He said, we, have, we as tech people have a responsibility because we know technology, we understand it. And he said, we all need to have the courage, and he had the courage with many others in the streets then, to, um, to oppose the official narrative that war is necessary. He said, one of the, or he, once he wrote, one of the great misconceptions is that a single person cannot make a difference. And believing this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's why we founded the Weizenbaum Award for Peace and Societal Responsibility for people who fight for a peaceful world or for world peace, as the UN calls it. For people who refuse to use their tech skills for war and its means. For people who use their tech skills for peace and peaceful means. For people who take the responsibility for their actions and their tech knowledge and they don't blindly, blindly or conveniently follow any official narrative. It's for people who do bravely make a difference and break with the self-fulfilling prophecy. This year we want to honor Julian Assange with the Weizenbaum Award for Peace and Societal Responsibility for his bravery fighting for global justice and state and governmental accountability and against war crimes, against state lies, against power misconduct and the use of torture. For his creative use of technology helping to invent a new kind of investigative journalism as we heard from Stella before for co-founding WikiLeaks and continuously holding up journalistic standards and for his merits and endurance. But what exactly did Julian Assange do? Well, he initiated and co-founded WikiLeaks in 2006, a new investigative media organization. It was possible there to anonymously upload leaks, documents, videos, anything. For example, governmental power use, uh, documenting governmental power misuses. It used technically the Tor anonymity network and the idea was to reduce the immense power asymmetry between individuals and groups and on the one hand and governmental actors on the other hand. Especially global powers like the US often involved in or starting wars. As we heard, this was one of the motivations. So as, he's, as uh, Julian Assange said it himself, WikiLeaks is the reaction to rampant growth of state secrecy. How did they do it? They checked for public relevance uh, of the uh, documents um, provided, um, applied a harm minimization policy, that means to warn people mentioned, which was a controversial or is a controversial method, and then the timely publishing of the information. Uh, in the year 2009, there were already over one million documents available on WikiLeaks which led to the website quickly being blocked in China, North Korea, Israel, Russia, or Turkey. Let's get a little bit into detail what happened there by showing the nature and the examples of those documents that could be found there. 2010 was the example of the collateral murder video Stella was referring to. The killing of journalists in, Bang in Baghdad, Iraq by US forces. It was an illegal war based on false information produced by US torture, it has to be mentioned. And this incident was denied until the date of the release of the video. So the video was uncovering war crimes denied, explicitly denied by the US before. Then we had the Afghan war diaries in 2010 showing the real situation on the ground, uncovering a lot of um, governmental lies and showing the real picture of a war. The Iraqi war logs in 2010 Uncovering the knowledge of grave torture and Iraqi security of Iraqi security forces after Hussein was defeated, which was also denied by the U.S. that there was gross uh, uh, grave torture and um, uh, um, yeah. Then we had the cable gate in 2011, and maybe for Germans here, interesting, we have the secret toll collect contracts also um, um, perceived uh, via <laughs> WikiLeaks. There was also some information about the NSA espionage in 2015 on WikiLeaks showing that the German Chancellor was being uh, surveilled starting in the 1990s, but also France, Brazil, Japan and also Japanese companies. And in 2017, 
uh, via WikiLeaks, we all got to know about the US Senate torture report of the CIA, which was highly redacted, only publicly available, but then all the seven, over 7,000 pages became public. It didn't matter that they renamed the uh, torture extended interrogation techniques. It was grave torture, there were black sites, rendition flights, and cooperation of UK, and also being made uh, possible by the ignorance of other countries. There were black sites in our, our, uh, Abu Ghraib or in Guantanamo. WikiLeaks was the source for many media outlets like New York Times, Guardian, Le Monde, Spiegel Online, and the BIJ, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. The question is, you can pay attention, how do they position themselves right now when Julian Assange is on the line directly? The results, well, no one was ever officially charged by the uh, publications of uh, WikiLeaks, for example, exposing torture by US forces. Not the war crimes, not for the torture, not for the lies, not for the warmongering, not for the inaction facing all the injustice, but now we know, as Snowden likes to, like to put it. Everyone can browse the documents, they're still online and they will be for a long time. And Assange is a great example for investigative journalism, press freedom and governmental, government critical work. Assange is on the other way a horrible example in the eyes of the USA, if he can continue. So, what happened to him after he started this project? Well, in November 2010, Sweden issued a European arrest warrant for Assange over allegations of sexual misconduct. There were provenly manipulated documents in this case, arbitrary and changing requirements, how the process should continue, online or not online, where and where not. And after Niels Melzer, the UN Rapporteur of Torture at that time, inquired more details, there was not even an answer from the Swedish government. And the charges, by the way, were later dropped. Assange was fating, facing extradition to Sweden at the time and from there to the US. He took refuge in the embassy of Ecuador in London 2012 and was subject to bullying, uh, bullying isolation, and as we now know, even spying. So the lawyer's secrecy, really important in case of uh, courts, uh, was not given at any point of time. In 2013, we know now, Sweden wanted to drop the charges, but the UK pressed it not to do it and to keep all the charges up. Meanwhile, in the US, there was a big discussion about the possible assassination of Assange. In 2019, Assange's asylum was withdrawn and he was brought into a UK prison. Surprisingly, exactly when, Snowden, uh, when Sweden dropped the charges. Well, they said not much is against him due to the long time past. No other comment that the charges who kept him immediate uh, um, uh, from the beginning uh, from traveling freely. Well, and right now, what's the situation? The US now is demanding extradition of Assange from UK based on the Espionage Act of 2017. It's the Espionage Act will be negotiated before a military secret court with no possibility to defend oneself. He will be, he's facing 175 years in prison and in a US prison. As we know, the country who, drew, uh, who um, conducted many black sites and invented the term advanced interrogation techniques. Well, now he's in Belmarsh prison and the reason is a bail escape. So he didn't pay the bail, which has never happened before as a reason for getting into a high uh, um, high emergency prison or high security prison. The extradition is basically granted, but it's still in revision, so the future is still open. But no longer he's able to communicate with his lawyers, it's still a court case, no, and there's no fair trial, and all observers, independent observers, say this. He's in solitary confinement, and he's getting f uh, psychologically and physically weaker. The whole process is torture, says Niels Melzer, the, uh, the UN Rapporteur for Torture. But what is torture? Torture is a cruel, inhumane, undignified treatment with a goal to break, uh, to break a person, to get information, or just to make a public example. Here, it is clearly the case that there should be an example being made to all journalists and leakers, for that matter. Don't mess with the empire, is the message. The US cannot reach Snowden, less so right now, so Assange gets all the wrath. Well, 
at the same time, Sweden and the UK actively help the US and other European countries watch quietly, which is outrageous from our point of view. What's happening right now has an effect on three levels. First, Julian Assange as a person individually. The torture effects become more and more serious and there is a very realistic uh, risk of suicide, as doctors uh, say it, when they have the chance to visit him. Second, press freedom, political freedom, and the idea of a constitutional state with a fair trial gets kicked in the trash. Such freedoms and principles are precisely necessary for this case against state power. Otherwise, there's no use of such rights. If they don't apply when they are necessary, they are useless and hollow talk. Third, the weight of the Western values in general. Well, of course, we already see Russia, China, North Korea, and so on to say, well, we imprison our journalists just like you do. Well, and they are essentially correct. To conclude, Julian Assange always knew this could happen, and he still pushed, pushed his agenda of transparency, peace, justice, accountability, and responsibility of those in power. Therefore, we combine the award ceremony with the following demands. To the UK, we say, free Assange immediately. To Germany, we say, take a stance and offer unlimited asylum. To the EU, we say, act on, your on our values. This is the time to show they actually have any value. And to all of you, we say, thank you that you're here. And to Stella, we say thank you. And to Julian Assange, we say also thank you for doing what you did. So we are very honored that the award will be received later on and that Stella was here. And the last thing uh, that's up to me to say is to, um, that as long we are all active and we pay attention to what's happening and we keep what's happening there alive in a discussion in the media, there might be a slight chance of Julian getting out of this alive. Thanks a lot.